testing. Uh, testing, testing. Here we go. This is uh, Shane here with uh, Prepper Talk Radio, and uh, our guest here, Alma, Alma from Vital Domes. Thank you so much for joining. You're welcome. Coming Thanks with for me. inviting me. So let me give you a bit of a roundup of what's going on here this morning. Uh, Scott was, as he, you know, he was out last week, and uh, his flight got delayed. He was going to be here, but his flight got delayed and will not show up until about an hour after the show ends. So uh, I appreciate Alma greatly for, for coming in here and, and sitting down with me and talking about their topic today. But f- let me get through the, all the uh, all the, uh, the the obligatories first. Of course, uh, we are brought to you by Survival Medical, survival-medical.com, the only first aid kits designed for long-term storage. These are fantastic. And you can go and see them in the Provo Sam's Club right now. They'll be there for a few more days. And starting on Thursday, they will be in the South Jordan Sam's Club. So go check them out there as well. And as you kind of know, uh, Survival Medical is taking the tour of Utah right now through the different Sam's Clubs. And uh, we'd really appreciate it if you'd support them. They're fantastic products. Um, but today, so much we could talk about today. And one thing I wanted to, I guess, first do is talk to Alma here first. We wanted to talk about, we've had Alma on before talking about uh, vital domes and what he does, and he's been out to PrepperCon, you know, the last two years. And I wanted to ask Alma, where did this all start? And this is going to kind of lead us into our conversation today, uh, what what we've chosen to talk about. And we pr- certainly appreciate you uh, joining us today and listening uh, listening to us and 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 uh, contributing to our conversation because uh, that's really where I learn the most personally is when I hear from you callers. And we have a great discussion. I, that's my favorite part about this, about our show, is when you call in. And not just me talking the whole time or Scott or whatever. Um, there's nothing fun about that. So, uh, so Alma, tell me about how you got started doing Vital Dome, maybe a little bit of your history. And that, I think that will lead us perfectly into our topic. No, I think that sounds great. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to go too deep into how we ended up doing it, but we... Uh, my wife and I, we, for lack of a better word, we felt this is what we were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So we we did it. And, you know, going on with our topic that we haven't announced yet, mm-hmm. I, um, my parents instilled in me a belief that we can learn how to do anything. That it, it, if, I, if I put my mind to it, I can do it. Uh, I really struggled in school. Mm-hmm. I don't know how other people are in school. I'm not one of those that can sit in the chair, listen to the teacher, and be able to regurgitate it 20 years later i i just i don't learn that way and uh i'm really hands-on really trying to figure things out really hands-on uh my dad i wanted to build a website years ago and my dad handed me the programming books because he's a software developer Mm -hmm. or was through his career Mm -hmm. now they're on a mission but he uh handed me the books and said why don't you learn how to do this and i sat down for nine months and tried Uh to figure out software and when i got stuck i'd sit down with my dad and he'd explain a, a concept and I learned how to learn. Uh, I got off my mission, picked up a guitar, mm-hmm. and I wanted to learn how to play guitar. D- kind of the same thing. And actually, guitar taught me how to learn uh, more, more than mm-hmm. actually going to school. Okay, and I, I learned how to learn. Yeah. So when we decided to do a tent, we really decided to build our own dome for ourselves. So I got on YouTube and started studying out machines, uh, sewing machines. You know, got on, well, I got on YouTube so I could see how people used them, mm-hmm. got on the Internet, studied them out, and I actually learned how to sew on YouTube. Uh, and then I, I bought my machine. I assembled it. They sent them in a box. You assemble the thing. and uh, That's how you got started. And that's I, how we I got started. I think there's some great topics there. I learned, I started learning how to learn, learning piano. Oh. So, yeah, my mother, she, she learned piano from her mother, and she thought it was imperative that we learn piano. And, you know, she was, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to use the word tyrant, but she was, you know, you will sit down and you will practice, and I'm grateful because, you know, when you're a kid, you don't know how to learn. No. And it was a great learning process. And it eventually got to the point, my mom and I were just talking about this the other day, that, okay, Shane, if you want to quit, you have to do that yourself. You have to tell your teacher, I'm going to quit. I'm gonna... And, of course, I never had the <laughs> had the, the uh, gumption to, to do that. And I, I think deep down I really appreciated, you know, what, what skills that, that gave me. That, like you say, it, it gave you me the ability to actually learn and not just, you know, absorb like a sponge you know you're actually doing something active well and i I think along with that as soon as you do start to learn something like an instrument 
Uh, for me, mm-hmm. guitar. I picked up a guitar. Guitar is one of those things that once you once your hand starts getting a little more comfortable on the fretboard, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you can start playing chords. And three main chords play 90% of the music you hear on the radio. True, and, true. And, and so, you know, maybe four chords. But <laughs> it's... You can start getting good really fast, and at least at least acceptably good. Making some progress so that you see that oh wow I can actually make music I can do something I can uh, I can see some progress with this with very little effort. And I think that instills yeah. a greater belief Absolutely. I can do this, and that's how it was with Vital Domes. I I I bought the sewing machine. My stitching was horrible. I was mm-hmm. I was on YouTube learning how to attach zippers and doing a fold mm-hmm. over, mm-hmm. and and I was learning all these new new terms and. And when I found, just as with software, there's a whole language. It's not not the actual programming language, but there's a language surrounding software. Well, in manufacturing materials, uh, uh, you know, like the fabrics and things like that, there's a whole language associated with it. And if you don't become acquainted with that language, you have no clue what they're talking about. Right, yep. And and so I, I tried to digest as much as I could. It took me – we we did our first dome uh, – I hand welded it together because we use a mm-hmm. fabric that you heat weld together. Mm-hmm. And I bought a little hand welder. I hand welded our very first one together. And it took me almost an entire week to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was horrible. And we took it to, that was the one we've introduced at PrepperCon. Oh, okay. And, and okay. I, I, I was stunned. We made, we made sales off of that. So were your prototypes made from, uh, you stitched them together, you used a sewing machine? Well, we, we actually heat welded it and stitched in all the, all the uh, Windows zippers and, okay, and, and right, things like okay. that, and, and it's interesting that you bring that up. My, one of my first jobs was I was I learned how to sew. I worked oh. at a uh, a place a where they make awnings. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would love to come up and live up in your neck of the woods, and we'll talk about a little bit about that later. But one of my first jobs was working at an awning company, and I did resews. And I was fifteen, sixteen. I did resews on trampolines. So I'd sit in front of this 50-year-old FAF industrial sewing machine and re-sew, you know, webbing and, and all, all the, uh, uh, the attachments there, for how the tramp attaches uh, to the springs on, on tramp. And I would just sit there and do that, and, and I'd occasionally I would get to sew other things. So what we're talking about today, this is a perfect lead into it, what we're talking about today is a little article I wrote a couple of years ago on my blog, uh, and it's entitled The 17 Skills I Want My Kids to Learn. So... That's what I want to talk about today, skills, actual either physical skills or life skills that, you know, I'm I'm trying to teach my kids as we go along in life. And so my first item on this list is sewing. That's one of the first (laughs) things I put on this list is to sew. And so we talk about, you know, sewing. And so I learned how to sew very young. I I don't know that's very young. Maybe it's very young nowadays, but... Maybe back in the early 1900s, you'd learn how to sew when you're four, you know? I don't know. I was 41 when I learned how to sew. Well, okay. 40. I was 40 okay. when I learned how to sew. So, I, yeah, that's, for me, I mean, I, that's definitely young yeah, yeah. compared to my my experience. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... so now, I, now I can sew much better back than I did back then. I mean, I we, we brought in other people, and so I, I just have to clarify. It's not it's not this crazy stitch like it was. We, right, everything right. is awesome now. I mean, mm-hmm. we've... we this, this gentleman named Bob Zeller came to our company about a year. It's been about a year. And Bob is just unreal. I mean, everything that he does, he builds mm-hmm. specific folders and all sorts of things. And and watching him, you know, on the same topic, watching him, y- you got to come up and meet Bob. Everything that he puts his mind to, he'll sit and he'll look at it, he'll scratch his head. And, you know, he's got 40 years' experience behind it, but he'll scratch his head and he'll look at it. And then he'll create something absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and he, he truly embodies the, the, the belief that he can do anything. Learning skills takes time. We uh, we had a call on line three. Sorry, I missed you. Go, feel free to go ahead and call back. Um, but yeah, like, like you're saying, you know, he's been doing this for a long time, and it, and it's and just with you know with me with sewing. Okay, let's hear uh, line three. Let me go ahead and pick this up. Uh, caller, what's your name? Oh, sorry. Let me turn you on here. Uh, caller, go ahead. What was your name? Are you there? Hello. Well, you're not there. Sorry, I missed you. All right, well, give us a try back here. I'm not pick, picking you up here. So, distractions. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so back to sewing. It, you know, it, it takes every, any skill takes time to, to to practice. So, learning the skills young uh, is going to give them time to develop confidence. And so that's why I, I, I wanted to talk about learning, teaching our kids these skills. And I mean, even when you're 41, if you know, if you're 41. 
and you don't know how to how to sew, then uh, give it a try. Okay, here's our color again. Let's give this a try. Are you there? Yeah, I'm oh, here. Great. What's your name? Uh, Andre. Hey, Andre. Thanks for calling again. Yeah, I'm uh, so- somebody out to do something that Hillary Clinton. She needs to be arrested for doing these crimes. Uh, yes, she does. Did yeah. you have a comment about uh, about life skills or skills about sewing or anything like that? <laughs> well, people better be good at it so we won't get holes in our clothes <laughs> and we can make good ones, I guess. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, thank you very much for your call, and uh, maybe next week we'll talk a little bit more about uh, about Hillary Clinton. So. Thank yeah, you. it's just our nation is going to hell, and we need some real it pride is. here. And I'm I'm glad you bring that up because you know those who are listening now may not be aware, and you know we want to bring that up to everybody, and and uh, that uh, everyone's opinion is a little bit different. And honestly, it's hard for me to even fathom that how she's even still in the race. But we won't go there any further. We we'll, <laughs> we'll get back to our topic here. But uh, so okay. Um, so she's just developed a different skill set than what we're okay. There about. we go. There we go. <laughs> she's been working on her skill set <laughs> yeah, her that, entire was that life. Politically that correct, that was well. That was a perfect tie-in, is what it was. There we it go. Was, it's perfect and politically correct as well. All right, uh, another call on line three. three. Let's uh, roll the dice here and see what we get. Hello, what's your name? Oh well, yeah, we just got cut off. I know it's like uh, it makes you don't even want to live anymore, huh? <laughs> All this injustice. Actually, I was talking with Paul. Uh, just before we came in the studio, and uh, we're thinking, okay, tell me where that nuke's going to hit, and I'll be right there. <laughs> I will make my way there, and uh, and just put me out of my misery. Yeah, because yeah, that's the only one, only thing that's going to save you from this cruel world. Yeah, no, you may very well be right. Did you have any other comments, Andre? Before we move on? Uh, no, it's just. Just that it just makes you not want to live anymore because of all the injustice that's going on. Well, hang in there, Andre. It's it will turn better. It may be after the collapse. It will be after the collapse, yeah. but it will it will get better. So get prepared, and that's why we're here to help you guys get prepared to get knowledgeable, and uh, so that we can make it through the collapse and come out the other side and experience a really a truly better world. Yeah, that's, that's what I we're wish something so. would happen because it's been 44 years and this sucks. Yep, oh. yep. I'm 44 and you know I'm barely realizing in my last decade of my life what awful condition we're in. And so that's yeah. why Prepper Talk Radio is here to help you guys. Give you hopefully give you some some uh, hope. You know, yeah, and some we need skills to get rid of all this communism that started it. That was the reason why it's this way. We need to stop this. Absolutely. For our real constitution being in place. Oh, and that that at that. Our Constitution is supposed to work? Is that why all these wrong things from Hillary Clinton and everything's allowed to happen and our broken borders aren't protected and our police are yeah. shooting people? I think Paul's show before us is probably, uh, he's much more adept at talking to these uh, to these topics than I am. So appreciate your call and uh, call us anytime. All right, bro. I'll Thanks, catch Andrew. you later. Thank you. <laughs> all right, awesome. So, um, what is our next skill? What, what other skill? That was my first one to bring up is, is sewing. I think that's an important skill for our kids to learn so we're coming up on a break here in about a minute uh what's what do you think alma what uh, what's another skill you i know well let, let me step back here a second and slow down talking because i'm talking too fast uh, you moved out from you got off the wasatch front you got out of a, a busy lifestyle and you moved out why why did you do that uh, it goes back to the way that we felt we felt very strongly that we needed to mm-hmm. be up there you know we, we lived just over the border yeah, up in idaho and it, it was it was something that both my wife and i felt very very compelled to do um all of our feelings were very deep and uh when we got up there it, it things things didn't naturally just fall into place but miracles occurred and and it mm-hmm. it worked I mean, we're where we're supposed to be and you know and honestly, and to go along that same topic, my wife and I have been feeling the same way. And I think this is a, a calling, you know, something that we need to, we're, we're really starting to take seriously. You know, we've got older kids that have the jobs and, and yeah. rent apartments and such. And so it's a little more, a little trickier for, for us than, than I think, imagine it was for you with younger kids to decide to move move out in a way. And, um, but uh, I can see that as part of a way to teach skills to your kids. Yeah. Ma- maybe not just... And let me rephrase that a little bit. Uh, I want to say maybe more important skills, life skills. Well, you know, we live in a town of about 260, 270 people. Yeah. It, the, the whole environment is different. And uh, we really like it. I mean, you know, it, it, all of our kids, we can all teach our kids how to work. We can all teach them how to use a rake, how to use a shovel. 
uh, teach them how to clean their room. And that mm-hmm. really doesn't matter where you live to mm-hmm. be able to teach those things. But we, we've we moved to an area where things are a little bit, you know, I don't know. We're, we're closer to the land. Yeah. All right. Well, here's our break. Um, this uh, segment, of course, is brought to you by Survival Medical, the only first aid kit designed for long-term storage. We'll see you on the other side of the break. All right, we're going to come back in here to this off this break here. We appreciate listening to listening to us here on K Talk AM six thirty, the Prepper Talk Radio Show, and today we are talking about skills. And uh, I've got uh, Alma with from Vital Domes in studio with me. I really appreciate him being here, and I think he's really an ideal to, uh, person to talk to uh, about this this particular topic. Uh, and as we left, we were talking about. Um, we talked a little bit about sewing and, and really about, okay, Alma had, mo- had moved off the Wasatch Front probably to, to uh, experience a better quality of life. I mean, and I guess that's all uh, in the eye of the beholder. Um, and what we're talking about, okay, uh, Alma's going to bring up his next uh, skill that he wants his kids to learn. And that we were talking about over the break here. What, what is that skill? Well, uh, it, it, it's obviously hard work. I mean, I want, I want our kids to learn hard work. Uh, but as we were talking in the break, Hard work for us is different than hard work for my kids. My kids think mm-hmm. that picking up the toy on the ground is hard work or going out and raking the leaves is hard work. You mm-hmm. know, we have a bunch of apple trees. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son, he doesn't want to go pick up the apples. Well, that's gross. It's, it's, and it's, oh, it's hard work. You know, mm-hmm. how, how can I go pick up 20 apples? I mean, that's, that's work. And, and, and it's a different. Yep. It's different. And you and I, we have our full-time jobs and, and all our yeah. other pursuits, and we work all day long at those and then we, when we come home, we got to do dishes, got to you know feed the kids, and those types of things. And then our kids complain about doing three chores, three simple chores that take like five minutes. Yeah, and I, what, what I'm learning with my wife, my wife is so much better at this than I am. She's patient. I kind of, I kind of push a little bit, and she lets him learn. She lets our kids mm-hmm. learn on their own. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, come on, let's get this going. Let's do this. And I mean, she, I'm learning from her. Mm-hmm. She has great skills, great parenting skills, and I kind of. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out as you, I go. You do as well. I, oh, I realize boy. that. It's funny. But, we, uh, but you know, it, it, being persistent. I think being persistent in trying to teach others skills. I mean, I, you know, when we talk about skills, we've got to talk about not just what skills we want to possess, but how do we teach them to our children? How do we teach them to others? Especially in an effective way where they will not shrug it off and say, you know, this is useless. Yeah, and we need them to be able to understand that they can learn it, that their behaviors can change. Mm-hmm. But we need to do it in a way that they're not thinking behavior. They're not using the same language that, that I just used to describe it. Mm-hmm. It it doesn't have to be fun, but it has to be attainable, and they have to be able to see growth. They have to have progress, and they have to be able to look back, and we need to congratulate them and say, look, yeah, picking up the apples, that was hard, but look what you did. And it may not be fun, but it may be fulfilling. It may be enjoyable in that they see the result of their hard work. Yeah. It may be truly hard work rather than, Oh, I did all this hard work building this this level in this video game. Look at all the hard work I do into. Okay, but what did it actually accomplish? What do, do you have to show for yourself that doesn't exist digitally? You, you know, know, years ago, uh, when I was about 23, 23 years old, uh, I went out and did really hard manual labor. I mm-hmm. did industrial uh, plumbing. Mm-hmm. And we were out in uh, Tigard over by Portland. Okay. And we went out and we were doing four tens doing graveyard shift, you know, because we're mm-hmm. on the Tigard campus at the college. And essentially what we did is we took these uh, this grit and we would sandblast the inside of the, the water pipes. So they okay. would refurbish them and mm-hmm. then we'd coat them with an EPA safe epoxy, whatever that was. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'd, have, we'd have to get these 100-pound grit bags. You know, here I am, this 23-year-old guy that's yeah. fairly soft. And Trying I to throw a hundred pound bag over your shoulder oh. or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah I hate brutal. it. And there were guys there. There's this one guy named Eugene, and he would throw two two grit bags on each shoulder, and he'd walk up and just talk to people, holding two hundred pounds on his on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the guy was unreal, and and I really I despised that job, mm-hmm. and I had given him a three month commitment, and I hated it. Uh, my friend and I, I was out there with a friend named Ben, and we came back, and my my dad was putting sod in the backyard, and we just pulled into town. And what I didn't realize is that that job, I mean, it had changed me physically. It mm-hmm. changed me mentally. It, you know, it was a, it, I determined that was, I didn't want to do that for my life. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was just, it was harder than I wanted. But we were watching him pull the sod off the, the pallets. And my friend and I, Ben, Ben, ben and I, we started grabbing these, these pieces big of sod, right. big rolls of sod. They were nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, here Wait we're wise. used to, to working with these big cans. pound bag of silica. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it was just wild. And, and I, I realized, okay, the thing that I despised, 
gave gave me pride that I was watching the way my father and my mother were watching us. I mean, they were looking at us like, wow. And, and what was taking them a long time, we came in and we busted it out in less than an hour. Mm-hmm. And everyone's amazed. Everybody was amazed. Yeah. And, and it was because I had gone through this very difficult experience. And at the end of it, I had physically changed. I had mentally changed. And it was neat. It was a really cool thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that doesn't really have much to do no, with no, skills, uh, but it was, absolutely. It was I think neat it, to see the progress. Yeah, and so, so what is the true definition of hard work? Is it actually going out and doing what you did, lifting 100-pound bags over your shoulder, you know, which not a lot of people can do that, you know, bag after bag for, for days on you it. you got to be conditioned. It's, yeah, oh yeah, it's, it, it's very difficult. But, so what, do, what does hard work really mean? Is it um, a dedication or is it actually going out and, and turning over dirt? You know, is it going out and planting the garden? You know, I really think it boils down to attitude. It boils down to what your mental state is. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if something is only as hard as you believe it's going to be or as, as you make it out to be. So it's pushing through barriers. Pushing through barriers. Yeah. Very cool. You know, going back to skills, if, if I can tangent for a of course, second. Of absolutely. So it's about two and a half years ago. Um, we In our stake, uh, we had an emergency preparedness coordinator. They sent out this little questionnaire, and it was anonymous. And on the back sheet of the questionnaire, they had this uh, – this this big list of skills, three columns of skills with little check boxes, and it was hey check check each box that has a skill next to it. So I went into software development. Now I was an entrepreneur, but I was doing a lot of software development. And as I was checking off the boxes, I realized I was only checking off maybe five out of sixty, seventy check boxes that mm-hmm. were available to me. Mm-hmm. And I realized even though I was very skillful in writing software and had learned a lot in that realm if the world goes sideways i have no skills i'll mm-hmm. be the guy emptying the latrine because i i can't do simple things you know i i couldn't it asked you know can you sew can you weld mm-hmm. uh what tools do you have what what do you have what are you competent in doing and i realized yeah. back then two and a half three years ago i had no skills you know i had a ham radio license mm-hmm. i could write software yeah. and, and i think that's it. that's a big point um that I wanted to talk a little bit about, but we've got a caller here in line three that's been calling in. So let's go ahead and take this call. Hello, uh, what's your name? You're, you're live on K Talk. And sorry, let me turn you on again. And then uh, caller's no longer there. So maybe I shouldn't just even take calls today. I'm just so bad at this. <laughs> so uh, I, what I was talking, what I wanted to, I guess, kind of expound on there is that um, skills. Yeah, I mean, what truly are skills? Is it programming? Is that a skill? All right, here, here's Caller's back again. Let's, let's give this a try. Let me turn you on, and then, okay. Uh, hello, Caller, what's your name? Hey, this is Jason. Hey, Jason. Sorry I keep uh, <laughs> messing up the phones here. Yeah, not a problem. Actually, if you can hold me over to the break, I'd appreciate that. But um, going back to the, you know, skills that you want your kids to have, uh, you guys are just a little bit over, uh, you know, all over the board, just a tad bit. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, as far as skills, I love what you guys have to say about uh, learning how to learn. Mm-hmm. Okay. What other skills are you wanting to impress upon kids? Yeah, we, we that's that's what we're hoping to <laughs> get into. We keep going on tangents here. The different skills. So, um, let me get into my next skill. And actually, hard work was one, was on my list. That was on my. I've got a list of seventeen here, um, and I'm sure I could expound from there. But the next item on my list there, or I'm gonna, actually going to skip down a few. Um, because there's no way we'll get to all these. Fishing. I want my kids to learn how to fish. And the reason I want them to learn how to fish is so that they realize, oh, they can actually, you know, they can provide for themselves. They can do something to, uh, in the way of the realm of survival, to to feed themselves. And, of course, that le- has to come with learning how to dress the fish, how to clean the fish, get it, and cook it, and, and then eat it. So I think that creates a lot of confidence in that if, you know, Whatever the situation may be, they they have this confidence. They can say, "Okay, I can. I have these skills that I can rely on. I may not have all the stuff because we talk a lot about stuff here on on Prepper Talk Radio, and prepping is a lot about the stuff. You got to have the supplies. You got to have the food storage. You got to have the tools, but you got to have the skills along with those tools. And that's why one of the reasons we chose to speak about skills today. So fishing. And I think a lot more comes along with, with fishing than just like the saying says, you know, you feed a man a fish, you, f- you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach a man to fish, you, you feed him for a lifetime. So, but it has a lot more to do with, uh, you know, being out in the wilderness and survival and, and confidence and such. 
you know, as we're discussing this and talking about it, you take take the fishing, for instance. If, if you're going to fish, you ought to have a skill of knowing how to cook that fish. Mm. And if you're going to have the skill of knowing how to prepare and cook that fish, well, you need to have a skill of knowing how to create the heat for it, whether that's a solar, that's whether right. it's a fire, whether it's that. And, and as you're talking about this, the, this thought's developing in my mind. We could really take any kind of a starting point and derive other skills that are required for that to be mm-hmm. a useful skill. Oh, and yeah. don't forget about drying fish, too. If you don't That's have true. a heat source, you yeah. know, uh, having a little bit of salt and laying it out into the uh, sun, but keeping away from critters. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. a lot of different aspects. Just like you say with fire building, that's, all, of course, on my list as well. Get, teach the kids how to find tinder, how to find the right woods and media to be able to create a spark or create oh, well, a hold, oh, No, no, I can solve the Tinder problem. I can teach that to you in 10 seconds. All right, go for it. www.tinder.com Wait a second. <laughs> I don't think we want to get... We don't want to go there, Jason. Uh, all right, well, hey, just trying to help. <laughs> Not that kind of Tinder. That's that, that my mind. But, my, my teenager's mind minds are there. <laughs> That's where they're at. And so when I... But, you know, you can see where my mind is. It's on actual Tinder... <laughs> Uh, fire starting material. Let me let me refer to it that way. So hey, it's all about the spark, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's where it comes from, right? Tinder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking about about you know, fishing. Um, what else? What other skill? I mean, we've got time is flying, so we got a lot of skills yeah. here. What you know, something my daughter's been begging me to do, and I don't know anything about it. But we've got an old nineteen sixties. Um, Boy Scout book, which is actually worth something, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm not talking about valuable skill or uh, money, but uh, she wants to learn how to do lashings. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Y- you know, and rope work, you mm-hmm. know, knots. Uh, they're, they seem basic to us who are old enough to have gone through a proper Boy Scout uh, <laughs> troop, but, you know, lashings. That's true. I've got, you know, a good trucker's knot. Absolutely. And, you know, that's one thing that is in pretty much everybody's bug out bag is some paracord, some kind of cord, some kind of rope. And I'm a big rope guy. I, I mean, I, I'm a caver, I'm a climber, or at least I used to be a caver and a climber. I don't do it much anymore. But uh, so I, I, I'm in love with rope. I love rope and I love lashing and I love knots. And it is an important skill that uh, you can't just do an overhand knot and you know, expect oh, yeah. that to work in every situation. You know, I can do a one-handed belay knot. Um, in, in, those are really critical skills to have. Uh, you know, if you're in a if you're on a mountain and you got to come down, you don't want a knot that slips. But what if your hand's injured? I practiced as a Boy Scout doing that with one hand. Mm-hmm. I can still, to this day, not having done it for 20 years, yeah, and do it in absolutely. less than 10 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. I can as well. I can picture myself holding the rope and doing doing uh, the knot here with one hand. So, yeah, absolutely. And I think you're right is... Our kids don't necessarily get exposure to those types of skills, but I think when they do, they eat it up. They love it. You know, oh, they do. When we're out outside and you know we're just walking around adventuring. That's one thing I love to do with my kids. Let's just go up to the mountains and let's just walk around this adventure. Let's see what we can see and, and uh, learn what we can. You know, it's, and, and they, they love it. They just eat it up. Another thing my daughter has, uh, for me, uh, asked about a lot is teaching her how to sharpen knives. Hmm. problem is, when it comes to knives, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is definitely yeah. a, a, an art. Yeah, it, it really is, you know, and knife sharpening and that whole thing, even though I got the Paul Bunyan Award when I was a Boy Scout. Mm-hmm. But, you know, even something as simple as uh, chopping down a tree. I mean, most people just think hack at it. You don't. Mm-hmm. Just simple skills. Just exactly. little and, and the thing is you've got to get out and do it. You can, yeah, you can download it on YouTube like the Matrix and put it in your head so that when you're oh, out there I next guess. time, then you can you can put it to use. Um but, yeah, you've got to get out there and, and swing that axe. And, you know, that comes back to hard work. Yep, absolutely. And, and yeah. all of this is hard work. You know, you get to, you get to a point where you're, you're stuck. And mm-hmm. you push past that point and break through and learn that skill uh, with higher, greater proficiency? Or do you, you move on? You give up? By the way, I really love the question that you had asked Alma in that, um, you know, what is hard work? And Alma's response was actually pretty good. I was sitting there thinking, you know what, I'm wondering if it is the ability to push through that which you don't think you can do. Okay, yeah. When it comes down to it. Great point. Well, you know, there's, there's, there are a lot of stories out there um, where, where, I'll just say it, you know, it's actually in the Book of Mormon. It's one of my favorite things where the burdens that are laid on their backs as Mm -hmm. they're, as they're doing it were really heavy. They were really, really hard. But as they continued, and as they asked for external guidance and external help, 
they weren't solved. They weren't delivered out of their problems. Mm -hmm. Their burdens or the hard work that they were doing was made light. Well, I, I, I think that's the way it should be. I mean, I mean that's that's where the greatest growth comes from. It's like when I was talking yeah. about coming back after working with the grit bags and working with the the big. Oh, pipes guys, and, you know, guys, that. we we can't have that going on the air. <laughs> that's not good. Um, yeah, yeah, we know your position. A, we know your. Yeah, well, hold Jason. on, no, 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 wait, stop, stop, hold on. Yeah, I have control here, here Jason. I can push this it, button. It's the <laughs> principle. It's it's the principle that that's important here, and and, and the the principle is. That as you push your as you as you push through whatever outside influences you rely on to help you get through, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your God, whether it's your children, whatever your have to is, whatever your want to is, and wherever your desires sit, whatever that that source is that helps you continue and push through, the burdens that are on your shoulders become light. Uh, they become easier to deal with. Uh, you know, if we were throwing, and they actually may go a little further, they become enjoyable. Well, and, and you can go beyond that. Not only do they become enjoyable, they become the foundation for the next things. Mm -hmm. um, I see that. Yeah. You, you know, if, if we look at this life as an actual progression, okay, I I learned how to write software. Well, I mm -hmm. didn't learn write so how to write software until I learned how to play guitar. And I, I got my first computer because I wanted to record myself and hear how I sounded so I could improve the guitar mm -hmm. playing. Well, fell in love with writing software. From software, I, I met my wife, uh, well, through playing guitar and software, and I was able to support my family. I was able to build on that, and now all of a sudden I'm building tents. And the skills that I have from building tents, well, in a survival scenario, I know how to do things that just most other people don't know how to do. Yeah, absolutely. And loving the conversation. Thank you guys for your, for your input and your comments. Um, this segment, and of course all of our segments right now, are brought to you by Survival Medical, survival-medical.com, the only first aid kit tougher than nature. We'll see you on the other side of the break. All right, coming on back from break here. Uh, thanks for joining us here on Prepper Talk Radio. I'm Shane of preparedguide.com. We've got uh, Jason on the phone still. He always has great comments. And we've got Alma here in studio from uh, Journey Tents as well, right? Journey Tents is another... Tents. Is another uh, I guess it's a cabin tent. Uh, it's really what it, what it is, and of course the vital domes as well. The, the dome tents you see at Prepper Dome. Um, so, of course, uh, our sponsor is Survival Medical. So, uh, survival-medical.com. You can see them at the Provo Sam's Club right now for the next few days, and then starting on Thursday hey guys, in South Georgia. They're not on the air. Oh, sorry, I didn't try. That's bad, my bad. Thanks, Jason, for, for doing that. For, not me, a I didn't push my button hard enough. You know, that's me being the amateur. So let me start over again. We're here back in the studio with Alma and with Jason talking about skills. Um, Survival Medical is our sponsor. Uh, you can find them in the <coughs> Sam's Club in Provo right now and in South Jordan here on Thursday. And uh, let's get back at it. Um, can I can I just interject really quick? Of course. I, I love the fact that the, when you press the button, it didn't turn on because that brings up something else that I think is a, a miss and a lost skill. Perfect. Is a lot of times right now, like if one one of my I have a, my daughter, my oldest daughter. You're talking about observation. Well, me not observing that button was. It's, it's not that, <laughs> but that is a good skill too. Mm -hmm. But but the the ability to recover. To actually do something mm -hmm. wrong, recover, trip, fall, and get up. Yeah, it, it, so many of us we, we get so filled with this this I don't know what the word is what pride, mm -hmm. where we become so embarrassed because we do something wrong. We don't try again. We don't try again, or or it's, or we stumble over ourselves because of it. Well, I don't know a single person on the face of this earth that is uh, is perfect and does everything mm -hmm. exactly the way that it should be done. Well, I mean, I mess up all the time. I I, I mean, on a daily basis. But if that were the in, if that were the thing that stopped me from being able to continue and move forward, I become paralyzed and I can't do anything. And and I I've watched it in my own children. You know they'll they'll try something they expect it they expect to be able to do it perfect the, the first, first time, time yeah because I they're can't watching do this yeah they're watching yeah. their older sibling who's who's able to do it mm -hmm. you know tying shoes exactly. I want my kids one of the skills I want for my kids my my two oldest can tie their shoes mm -hmm. my 7 year old he can do them but he doesn't want to do them he em. doesn't do very well he doesn't do very no, well comes into, yeah. and he compares himself to his older sister hey you know what she does it look how well she does mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's something as simple as tying shoes that's the phase of life that we're in though yeah. it, well, with our hey, kids i i have to interject on Go that ahead, one real quick um you know thing is 
one of the things, and this comes down to a, a more of a psychological perspective, and that is simply this. When a person gets frustrated, it's very difficult because they're locked into a pattern of thinking and they don't have the vision uh, outside of that thinking that is the solution. And so when frustration sets in, there's a tendency within human beings to stay stuck within that <clears throat> tendency, to, and, and the mind wants to be right, so it will create the validation for that rightness, and it's the ability to interrupt that. So you're um, saying that the skill we need to teach our kids is to be able to think for themselves. Yes, and, to, uh, and self-awareness, to be able to observe, um, okay, I'm frustrated here. My skill set right now is diminished as a result of the choices, but my choices right now are born out of the frustration. So how do I get out of the frustration? Yeah, what's the best way to, to teach that? Yeah, how do I push through that? It, and going back for just a moment, though, mm -hmm. uh, as far as you know, wanting and needing things hard, we don't want the NSA hearing that because we don't want politicians coming in and <laughs> saying, okay, let's get more draconian laws. You, you and your perspective, Jason, we just absolutely love it. That's, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but my question is, okay, how do we teach this to our kids? How do we teach them to, to push through that? I mean, it, it, my, my, I think the obvious answer is, to give them little small experiences where they, they do something that's maybe not that hard, but it's hard to them, and then they break through and it's like, hey, I was able to do that, great, and then they continue to move on. Well, and it, it's like it, we, we can't force them. We can't push them. Um, yeah. The analogy Especially in scouts, my kids. Yeah, the analogy sure. in scouts was you can't push a rope. You have to pull it. And, mm -hmm. you know, you got to coax your kids along. I mean, what, what are, the, what are the, the, the correct words for this? Patience and long-suffering? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we, we've got to do it. We've got to do it with love. We've got to be able to help our children with love, uh, whether it's overcoming an obstacle, whether it's overcoming something that they thought they could do or they, they think they should be able to just adopt and, and be able to do it fast, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. can't. Well, you know, I think most kids think they're, they're indestructible, they're invincible, they know everything. Yeah. I just don't want my kids to grow up as part of the snowflake generation. Yeah, I don't want absolutely. them to melt. As soon as something happens that isn't That's exactly difficult. perfect, I don't want them to melt. Mm -hmm. I want them to have some some. Well, well, basically what, what I've learned to have over my life, it, things don't go the way you want them to. Mm -hmm. Th people don't like you all the time. Uh, it takes time. There's patience involved. Yeah, I don't do everything right. I mess up, but I can't always melt. I can't just give up and quit. Mm -hmm. you, you, and, and I want, I, more than anything, I want my children to learn that because if they can learn that, that becomes a foundation. They can build any skill set. I mean, you go back to your mm -hmm, fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't throw the, the hook in the first time and uh, expect a fish to jump on it. You've got to learn. Yeah. And if you melt on that first one, you'll never, you'll never become proficient at fishing, never become proficient mm -hmm. at starting a fire. And then when you catch that first one, you get a glimpse of and realize, okay, this takes a little more than I thought. This isn't as easy as I thought. I need, probably need to be, have more patience and, well, and, and try new lures and try different techniques and move to a different new spot and, and, yeah. and, and work through the different problems there may be and if you give them one or two one or two successes and let them experience it i've watched this with my own son he is he he's brilliant and he learns so rapidly i can get him i can teach him a principle and he'll expound on it naturally we, we got him a little motorbike he became uh you know he was really timid as he was driving around the yard mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. timid when he first got on it that's scary um, yeah well 30 minutes later he wasn't as timid Four hours later, the guy was riding like a pro, and now he he's just amazing. Has it's, he fallen off and gotten hurt? Hasn't has not. Not yet, huh? Well, I take that back. He has, but he but he got right back up. I mean, mm -hmm. even when we were playing catch, we were playing catch, and I I, I pelted him right smack dab in the middle of the face, <laughs> <laughs> and I felt really bad. But he uh, he shrugged it off. You know, it, it, a tear came, but he, he mm -hmm. wiped it away, and he's like, "Let's keep going." And mm -hmm. he wanted to do grounders next, and the grounder popped up and yep. hit him. And okay, well, let's go back. And, and, and I loved it. He pushed his way through, and, and he's learning the little nuances of okay, I'm going to move my face out of the way this time. And and I'm not teaching those to him. Right, he's I'm learning for him, himself. Uh, he's learning for himself, but I'm giving him an environment that and and a series of experiences that he can learn and he can develop those skills. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Great perspective there. All right, let's let's pick a. Let's pick it. Kind of oh, that sorry, Jason, go ahead. I had your volume down. What were you saying? Yeah, no problem. Uh, just let me dovetail on that. You know, when I notice, and it's been my observation, and so it's only my experience, that when a child is really frustrated and they're lost in that thinking, uh, two things. One, stopping the child and having to take a deep breath. 
That, that's powerful. It, it mm-hmm. really does an amazing job. And the second thing is, is try and give them a little small success in there so they can come to their own conclusion. And that's the trick. But give them a little bit of a success. And you guys kind of covered that a little mm-hmm. bit in mm-hmm. that, you know, you need to give them a little bit of a success. That prompts and fuels that, that, that enthusiasm. And enthusiasm, the root word is enthusos, which is Greek for energy of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you install, instill that enthusiasm, then all of a sudden that energy shifts from frustration to exploration. Curiosity. Yeah, great comment. Great well, comment. And uh, expanding on that, you've got to have, you've got to fill, we have to fill our children with, what's the right word? We, we need to believe in them. Mm-hmm. We need to give, we need to fill them with confidence. And, and you know, they're not going to just be naturally confident. I mean, some kids are, but most people aren't naturally confident. We have to give them the confidence. Uh, that's something I love about my parents. My parents believe in me. My parents support me. My parents, they they are, I mean, they're amazing. My father and I, we're best friends. Uh, it, we, mm-hmm. we built this relationship when I was 14 years old. Uh, he and I went through, He moved. we moved up to, from Washington to Utah, and we went through a, a difficult time where we were trying to sell the house there and, and mm-hmm. My mother was trying to sell the house. We were here. My dad had started school going back to get his master's in computer science. And I got to spend months with my dad. And we bonded and we created this relationship that was absolutely incredible. Because of that relationship, which which is still intact today, I, I cherish it. I have between my, my father, my mother, and now with my wife. And we've been married 13 years, but we we, we dated for two years. I have a support system behind me that that instills confidence in me. These, I mean, my wife is absolutely incredible at this. She she she's you know when I when I'm laying down on the floor crying, she's saying you can pick yourself back up. You can do this. I've seen you do harder things than this. And when, and now that you looking back to your relationship with your father, now you know what you want with your kids. I, yes, yeah. I, my dad and I were talking about this just the other day. I I want to be a daddy. Mm-hmm. To my kids, not dad, not a father. Mm-hmm. I want to be daddy, not not the best friend. Not no, I, I, and and daddy isn't isn't. Yeah, he's not your best friend. He's not. He's not, he's he's a trusted advisor in your life. He's. Mm-hmm. He, I want to be trusted of my kids when they because they're going to go through really hard things. They are as they're as they're trying to acquire these skills. They're going to skin their knees. They're going to they're going to fall. They're going to get bloody noses. They're going to have emotional catastrophes in their life. We don't know what's coming for them. They're going to make poor decisions. I want to be the kind of father that they come and they, they know that no matter what happens in their lives, I'm there. I will champion them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm there. I can be their confidant. I can. And my wife is amazing at this. My father's that way for me. My mother's that way for me. I want to be. I want to be like my wife, and I want to be like my dad. My my father in law, he's he's the same way. I mean, he's he's incredible. And let's hope that our kids, you know, feel the same way about us that way as well. Those are skills I'm trying to learn. Yeah, exactly. That. And so let's let's talk. Try and get a few more skills in here before we're out of time. Almost here. Uh, nunchuck uh, skills. Nunchuck skills. Star throwing. <laughs> martial skills, arts skills. Martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I, and the reason I want to talk more about these skills is, you know, I think w- you and I we can look back and we can see, okay, this skill that I learned for computer programming, yeah, that's a it's a valuable skill to to earn a, an in, uh, an income, but. What about a survival skill? I mean, and, and that's really kind of where I'm trying to focus a little bit on some of survival skills that take us back maybe before our time to where our ancestors and our, our progenitors, they, they used every single day, you know, not just, oh, we're going to go and practice this skill on a weekend, but this is something they used every single day. What are some of those skills that you can see? Uh, well, you gotta, of course, you gotta I've got a list. you got to have problem-solving skills. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's kind of gone away with, with the Internet. It has. And with uh, YouTube and such. Well, yeah, what did I do? I went to YouTube to learn how to sew instead of just sitting down at the sewing machine. Figure it out. Yeah, look at the manual. Oh, here's how I thread it. And then uh, and then they start figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, have, having a mentor is fantastic. But having the, uh, the – I don't know. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. Is is And kind of what I'm looking back is, you know, gardening. You know, that's that's that seems like a simple skill, but it takes a lot of practice. It takes a I lot mean, of practice. To be able to grow a crop – and and bring in the harvest and and actually have enough to eat or or, or like my carrots my carrot my carrots are better this year than they were last year but they're still not what they should be and I'm still trying to figure that out why you know we moved up into a farming community as you're talking mm-hmm, about mm-hmm. that I I'm one who I I love having food storage yeah, that's that's my 
that's my safety net. It's your warm blanket. It is. It is my warm blanket. Yeah. Up, the, up in the farming community, these guys, I mean, they, they can put things in the ground, and mm-hmm. they can get a yield out of it that I, I, I can't even hope to get. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, they've been doing it for generations. Um, but that's a whole different skill set. I mean, I listen to the, the conversations around the neighborhood and the conversations that they have concerning those, those things of growing and that, that. It's a whole different skill set. It's amazing. It's amazing what they can do up there. Yeah, and that takes a lot of practice, a lot of patience. Uh, what about, here's one I love, orienteering. Be able to navigate. T- take to navigate, to take a compass, and the wonder and the amazement of that needle being able to po- always point north. I mean, that, as a, as, a, as a young scout, that was just something that just amazed me. I've got a caller here in line five. Let's go ahead and bring him on here and see what they have to say. Uh, yeah, what's your name? Hello, are you Hi. there? Yes. I am here, sir. Yes, what's your name? Uh, my name's Ed. Yes, Ed. We've got about a minute left. What What have you got for us? I just have a quick question. Do you guys have a website? Uh, we do. It is in in the works at PrepperTalkRadio.com. Right now it's PrepperTalkRadio.net. Uh, but we were able just to able to buy .com. So, and I've also got PreparedGuy.com. There's PrepperCon.com. Of course, Vital Domes, Journey Tents, um, and you know we and then of course we're also on Facebook and we i we we video record this and we put it on our YouTube channel so we've got Pre- uh Preppercon TV on YouTube as well as Prepper Talk Radio on on YouTube. And so we got a lot of different places just you know type in Prepper Talk, type in Prepared Guy and we're usually going to come up and you can get more content there. Perfect lead Thank into our uh, thanks everybody for your calls. Thank appreciate you joining us today. Um, we are of course brought to you by Survival Medical survival-medical.com the only first aid kit tougher than nature we sure appreciate your uh, support there john with uh, with the show and thank you alma for coming on with us great conversation wish we had more time and we'll see you guys next week